Can Qualcomm also, let's take a brief step away from mobile yes. and take on Intel and Apple and other such companies in the laptop and desktop space. So the nature of what a computer is seems to be changing. It's like smartphones like merging. It's all being a smartphone just with a bigger screen or something like this. So what does the future of that look like? Before I answer that question, let me just step back a little bit because, and I'm sure we're gonna, we can talk more about those things, but the the reality is Qualcomm is changing a lot. And uh, we use, I know we spend a lot of time talking about 5G and smartphone and Snapdragon. And I think that has been what had defined Qualcomm for many years. But the reality is even consistent with that 5G conversation, which is a technology to connect everything, Qualcomm is also changing. Our technology that was in many cases designed for phones, and we said it in the beginning, connectivity, and processing is going to virtually every industry. And as a result, Qualcomm is really changing with it and expanding to a number of different addressable markets. Some of those markets is, is the PC, as you talk about it, the, the conversions of mobile and PC. And the reason I'm excited about this, because you see a lot of things happening that bring this right front and center when you think about the future technology. So what we learn with the pandemic is that the number one use case of personal computers is communications. Uh, it is interesting when you think about that. That's the number one use case on a PC today is communications. It's actually funny because in the cellular industry, actually I'll say, let me step back. In the telecom industry, we've been chasing this killer application of video telephony for decades, right? I remember uh, back then in the wireline, uh, even before the internet and IP, I, ISDN, you remember those uh, AT&T desk phones with a little screen and they said, you can do video telephony. We don't watch that uh, in uh, Back to the Future 2. Then when we started developing 3G, said people said, what's the application for having data to a cell phone? All video telephony. Then we started doing 4G, and in the beginning, people said, well, why do you need all this broadband? Oh, video telephony. But it took a pandemic to make video telephony the killer application. And that's now the number one uh, use case on a PC. So now think about that for a second. P personal computers now, there are technologies that people, when they were going to buy a PC, they didn't care much about it. Now they do. Camera. Camera. How good is the camera? The audio. Is that connected? How good is the connectivity? Do you have the latest and greatest Wi-Fi and cellular? What's the battery life? Because you're going to be working from anywhere. Sometimes you're near that, sometimes you're not. So all those things, what's the portability like? So those things started to change how we should think about the PC. But I won't stop there. Let me talk about another trend. So, and it and all come as a result of what we saw the pandemic. Let's say that you are, you're an engineer, you're the computer-aided design. You, you have an advanced uh, desktop uh, computer or workstation in your office, but you want to work from home someday, so you're not going to move that to your home. So what do you need to do? You're going to have to rely on that. You're going to run that on the cloud, and you're going to run it on the cloud. You need high bandwidth because you almost want the cloud to be uh, the same as your computer for that use case. That's the 5G on-demand computing use case. The use 5G is almost a link between two computers. But then, you know, CIOs are saying, well, my workforce is going home for certain days. I want all the data to be in the cloud. So you look at, for example, Microsoft OneDrive or the ability to collaborate, you need the bandwidth. So that when you put all of those things together, you start thinking about what's the next generation PC? And that's the opportunity for Qualcomm. I'll just give an example. Uh, back in uh, uh, Mobile World Congress uh, recently, Lenovo, they have a line of, uh, of uh, enterprise laptops called the ThinkPad. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So they announced the ThinkPad based on Snapdragon. With 5G on, 28 hours of battery life. Oh, wow. So, so that's next generation. So just PC. a nice screen with extremely high, nice screen and keyboard, uh, and extremely high connectivity to maybe an even more, like a more powerful machine in the cloud. 
something more, the data, connecting to the data, connecting to so, compute, all that kind of stuff. You have the camera capabilities. And let me go uh, one step more. Microsoft talking about some of the features they're doing now using on Windows 11, using Snapdragon. Remember, we talk about a Snapdragon has an AI processor inside there. So one of the cool features Microsoft's talking about it is you can be on a Teams call and you can make sure your eyes are looking at the camera uh, 100% yeah. of the time. Well, that's an interesting, so they can be talking and about that. And you do that with AI. Yes, that's really tricky to pull off. For example, the reason I'm a huge stickler for doing these in person, these conversations in person, it's really tough to get right but it's a worthy challenge. So that's where the metaverse hopes to, so like I just, because you said the importance of this telephony of humans connecting, teleporting themselves, getting that right is really difficult. There's a lot of people hate Zoom meetings, but that doesn't mean you can't improve that experience and get rid of the hate. A lot of people hate talking to their car too, because the voice, the natural language processing is terrible. But when it's not, it's a beautiful thing. So getting that right is... This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. Think about it. It starts with the PC making the PC giving you a better experience for Teams. But then it goes right back into this trend of connecting physical and digital spaces and all the work we're doing with the metaverse and virtual reality and metal reality in the future is why not call somebody or connect with somebody with a hologram? It's possible. And also to mention some increasing amount of intelligence in our cars. So semi-autonomous autonomous cars and the interactivity between human and and car, which are, for me, things are uh, really exciting. Let me ask you a big question. So when, when aliens again, now on the other side, right, and humans destroy themselves through nuclear war centuries from now. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. But in case, you know, let's just hypothetical thought experiment. And they write a history of, of humanity in the 21st century. Uh, what would they remember Qualcomm in the 21st century as a company? Would it be a car company? Would it be, like, think of all the crazy pivots that might happen in the next, like, 50 years. Because you're thinking, you said Qualcomm enables all of these things with 5G, and there'll be probably other Gs. It keeps increasing. So basically, connectivity and computation, and everything becomes connected, and everything is capable of computation. Might you be become a robotics and car company? Um, I will argue we're already an automotive uh, uh, company today, and uh, but let me tell you what I what I would like Qualcomm to be remember and recognized for. Um, I think everyone that knows Qualcomm immediately, you know, connect us pun intended to connectivity and wireless. But the reality is we've been actually the company providing intelligence and in, in processing to everything on the edge, everything outside the data center that we're doing. Those billions of devices that are going to be connected. And uh, and that's kind of explained when we talk about the connected intelligent edge, the beyond phones, cars, PCs, and all of those. And the broader IoT, as we talk about, everything will be connected and intelligent. And that's what we want Qualcomm to be recognized for. So, by the way, for people who are not familiar, there's some technical jargon. But people use the word edge, like edge computing. It's... Uh, by the way, that's probably changing what that even means, but it's basically everything that's not a giant thing that's making a lot of noise in a building somewhere. So it's mobile devices and the uh, mobile devices of all kinds of, well, a refrigerator is not mobile, but it would be edge. So it's it's like, what's a sandwich? That kind of discussion. Um, <laughs> but basically edge computing is, is uh, the edge of that expanding space that you mentioned that Qualcomm is trying to connect and enable with computation. Here's a simple way to describe what the edge is and edge computing is. I think as we think about the evolution of the data center, uh, you need to bring the computational closer to the devices. Also, when you put the computation together with the connectivity, at the same time, you're going to see a lot of advancement of artificial intelligence happening closer to, or at the device. Look, it's a very, I, I have a simple way to describe it. Remember, in the beginning of this conversation, we talk about in the 4G era, broadband and mobile computing evolved side by side. If you're going to have broadband, you might as well have a computer in the palm of your hand. So we needed to invest in those two technologies. In 5G, AI develops 
side by side. You're connected to the cloud 100% of the time. You have a high bandwidth and you have now a smart and intelligent thing that can make decision in real time, provide context information to the cloud to make the models more accurate and as well compare and contrast with the cloud. So there's going to be an exponential development AI happening with all the edge devices, the devices that are outside the data center, and computation is going to go alongside that. And a great example, that's the car. Um, the car, you know, uh, we haven't talked much about the car, but, you know, Qualcomm is now, uh, you could argue, was as much as an automotive company as wireless company, working 26 global brands. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to see, if you look at our mobile heritage, and we talk about form factors, thermal, battery life, you're not going to put a server in the trunk of a car, but you need as much computational capabilities. And that's what we see Qualcomm providing, you know, as the car become a connected computer on wheels, we provide the computational and all the sensors for you to do assisted driving for the new digital cockpit experience, connecting the car to the cloud. And it's all of that's happening at the edge.